He's in his seventh year now. We drafted him eight years ago. He was our last pick, the 12th round pick. We waved him. He went on, played with the 49ers, and then he came back. He was the outstanding player in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. They just didn't block old Rod on that. You know, the Raiders seem to have so many things go wrong, but they always win. That's what the good teams do. I mean, they have 42 turnovers, second worst in the league, but they just keep winning. Again, flunk it the ball in the end zone and the Giants will have a safety. Plunkett, Bill Courier came up quickly. Plunkett fell on the ball in the end zone and that's just what you were talking about. That's the type of thing that happens to him. You know, as Tom Flores was saying, he said, we just can't go out and have an easy one. He said, every game win, we have to make a game out of it. 27 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Missler in motion again. And off is to Butch Wolfel. Reggie Kinlaw and Bob Nelson wrap him up. Green Bay in Atlanta. The Packers in the thick of things in the NFC Central. 14-0. Atlanta trying to stay alive in the NFC West. Kansas City 7, Seattle 7. San Diego 14-7 over Denver in the first quarter. Speaking of first quarter, that's the end of number one here at the Coliseum with the Giants ahead of the Raiders by the score of 2 to nothing. You're about to see the Ford Ranger leap to new heights in quality. Based on a survey of owner-reported problems during the first three months, Ranger quality was unbeaten by any major small truck maker. And Ranger has V6 power, more horsepower than Chevy S10 of the imports, and a wider cab than any small truck. For toughness, horsepower, and unbeaten quality, it's Ranger down-to-earth tough. The best-built American trucks are built. Ford tough. Look it back to throw. Branch takes one tackler, gets in giant territory, Terry Kennard. Terry Jackson, both combined to get him down, but it's an 18-yard pickup. You know, you wonder how Cliff Branch gets so open on the out pass. The reason is that the corner, Terry Jackson in this case, is so worried about Branch going deep that he respects it too much. He gives him too big a cushion. He's way off, and then Branch can just cut out in front and catch it in front of him. With that catch, Cliff Branch has now gained over 8,000 yards on pass reception. Marcus Allen for just two. Kenny King is back in the backfield now with Marcus Allen. Look it back to throw. They get Lawrence Taylor blocked. They have Todd Christensen wide open. Christensen struggles down to about the giant 12 before Terry Jackson can get there. But it's a 17-yard pickup. It's an amazing story right there, too. Christensen. Todd Christensen was a running back in college at Brigham Young, was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. Wade went to the New York Giants. He was there for a week, and then the Raiders picked him up, and he was a special teams guy, and they made a tight end out of him. Watch him here. He just comes across. The Giants are in a zone defense. Cliff Branch drew all the respect over there. You see that? Mm -hmm. And that opened the hole for Christensen. First down, Raiders. 13, drunk it, back to throw again on first down, and the receiver, Don Hasselbeck, whom they got from New England, and Hasselbeck is a big target, 6-8, Raiders get the lead. He puts Marcus Allen is in motion out to the right. He does a little movement here. He looks to the right. Then he comes back to Hassel back here. And as you say, he's a big target. The Giants were in pretty good position. They had three guys there. But Hassel back was just too big. Whoop, right over the top of him. A good throw by Plunkett. Bar for the extra point with home holding. Right down the middle. Touchdown. This is what happens when you have a six foot seven tight end 
We'll see it right here. See, Plunky can see him pick him out all the way. Look at that. You can throw it up over everyone right in the half. That was a heck of a throw. It really was. Eddings with the man in motion. Bruner out of the shotgun. Stepped up into the pocket. Has Floyd Eddings. And Floyd Eddings has some room. And he can run. Eddings to the greater 35. Down at the 32 by Van McElroy. 30 yard gain as Eddings showed good balance and aggressiveness to go with it. And I'll tell you, the Giants are doing a good job of pass protecting here. You see, because Bruner now can step up. You see, he can step up, he can get the ball out there at Eddings. He had man to man coverage, and once once a man who was man to man on him fell down, he was able to pick up another 20 yards. Direction. It does bother. Well, Eddings in motion. Here comes the blitz. How long? It may not have been a blitz. I don't know where he came from, but they had some kind of a stunt, I'm sure, because he came up the middle. Well, just long. Long will come in, and he'll play tackle. He plays in the inside on passing downs, and it was a stunt. He just got free straight up the middle. Bruno looked up. And there was 75 Howie Long right in his face. So the Giants were knocked out of field goal position. Of course, they have to punt. Dave Jennings back to kick. Greg Pruitt back deep for the Raiders. Los Angeles 7. Punted block. Tony Caldwell. Bill Parcells said yesterday in a meeting they've got another guy on special teams who really does a good job, and that's the guy he mentioned. He was talking about Caldwell, but you'd think that the Giants, being concerned with Caldwell, would have had someone on him. Now, what happens, they get a block there, but Jennings was turning to his left, trying to get the ball out of bounds. Now, watch Jennings here. He turns, he kicks it right into Caldwell. So the Raiders are in good shape. They lead 7-2. to two. Plunkett going to work. Christensen open. Todd Christensen. Out of bounds at the Giant 31. Knocked out by Brian Kelly. Interesting story about this guy. When he was drafted by the Cowboys, apparently they saw something. And they said, we want you to try to play tight end. And he said, no, I'm, I don't want to play tight end. I'm a running back. So they had too many running backs. And he went to the Giants for a week as a running back. And is now the league league's leading receiver after the Raiders convinced him that that was the spot for him. You know, originally he came to the Raiders as a running back, and they used him in passing situations, not at tight end, but out of the backfield. Funny how things develop. Plunk it again. Barnwell will get only a couple of yards out of that reception. to play in the first half. It's the Raiders 10, the Giants 2. To get ahead in business these days, you've got to be fast. You not only have to be fast, you have to be faster than the next guy. And as fast as you are, there's always someone else who thinks he's faster than you. And the faster you go, the faster everyone else tries to get ahead of you. And the faster you have to go to keep up with the fastest. And no matter how fast you go, everyone everywhere is always trying to be faster. So the GE 2800 dishwasher. It does almost everything but clear the table. Coming up at halftime, the NFL Today with Brent Musburger and Irv Cross with scores and highlights and all the developments. And there are many around the league today. Still no wild Alcedo at defensive right end for the Raiders. Otherwise, it's the same as they began. Ernest Gray takes it from Scott Bruner, and he's now got some more room. Gray gets out of bounds at the Raider 45. Lester Hayes got him out of bounds. 32-yard gain. Ernest Gray having a great year. Watch him. He starts here from the outside. He's running an in pattern against the zone. You see the corner. 
he he lays off. Watch it. He's pointing in there to him. Gray makes the catch. Boom. Gets out here to the sideline. Bruner back to throw again. Aaron Williams. Haynes finally makes the stop inside the 15. Lester Hayes on the assist. Aaron Williams flashing a little foot speed. Bill Parcells wants a timeout. Now I'll tell you, he hit an in from the left side to Gray and an in from the right side to Williams. The Raiders are playing off, and that's a heck of a pass pattern here. You see, they're playing playing off. They're giving too much cushion out here in the outside, and we just see that in get in there, and they have a big hole right in the middle on both those plays. The Giants come roaring right back in good shape. Scott Brunner looking. Intended for Ernest Gray, a little bit behind him, Mike Haynes. Right with him. Well, on that one to Gray, Mike Haynes was so far off that Gray just beat him in the inside. Here he's playing man to man. He's playing an inside technique. Gray is running inside, and Haynes had that ball go right into his hand. From 31 yards out, Ali Haji Sheik with Scott Bruner holding. Sheik is perfect. Rather unusual score at the half, 10-5. Well, it's not the half yet. I wonder if that's a sympathy pain. Tough down there. Taylor after Plunkett. Plunkett just gets it away. Flag is down. Marcus Allen fumbles. Giants have it, I believe. Scramble is on. But there's a penalty marker down. Plunkett was hit late, I think. They're going to call by Lawrence Taylor, which is really going to upset him. Plunkett, he's going to come from the outside. Here he comes right here. Plunkett throws the ball, and he hit him after he let go. He really didn't hit him in the head, though. He just nope. hit, him, hit him in the back. He didn't get as upset as he did earlier in the year. Now he's lined up in a different place. Midfield before Terry Kennard made the stop. Terry Kennard made the stop. But they got in a position where if they didn't get the touchdown, they're in good position for a field goal. 38 yards out for Chris Barr. He has hit his longest of this year, 47 earlier. He has hit again. And the Raiders move further in front. That's the the end of the first half as Bill Parcells takes his troops into the Coliseum locker room along with the Raiders and Tom Flores 13 to 5. Don't know that we've had that score before. Nope. But the Raiders lead the Giants by that margin 13 5 at the half. Halftime statistics pretty even really. It is, and the big thing there is there's no turnovers by either side, and I think that's why we have this type of game. I really had the feeling that both teams were sparring in the first half. Maybe the Giants were waiting for one of those frequent Raider turnovers, and they just haven't given to them yet. Raider first down at their own 30. They lead 13 to 5. Bluffton had a good first half. Marcus Allen in motion. Goes back to throw. Lawrence Taylor after him. Plunkett steps up. Hits the front. Branch picked up by Brad Van Pelt. Up close to midfield about the 47. You know, the Giants don't line up in an even defense much. You see here, they don't have the center covered. Dalby comes out, cuts Carson. So now the fullback can start out that way and then cut back into that gap. Dalby got a good block on Harry sure Carson, did. knocked him down, and then that allowed the cutback. It'll be third and seven. Throwing down for the Raiders. Marcus Allen and Frank Hawkins are the two men behind Plunkett. Barnwell, it's a touchdown. Malcolm Barnwell. Terry Jackson, the defender. 36 yards.
yard touchdown pass well thrown by Jim Plunker. Well, you know, it's just a matter of time for the Raiders. They're going to get that up. They're going to get deep. You know that that's what they talked about at halftime. This situation, they caught the Giants in a press playing a tight man-to-man -man coverage. Malcolm Barnwell just ran that quick up. Let's see if we can see it here in the left. Is the outside guy. He starts in. He goes inside a little, then back to the outside. That's Terry Jackson on him. Good throw right over the inside shoulder. Bar for the extra point. And it's good. Let's see if we can watch the pass protection here. Plunkett has good time. He's just backing up. Throws the ball out. Touchdown. Led Barnwell away from the defender. That's a good throw. Barnwell touchdown. Later fake the blitz. Luther operates out of the shotgun. Ernest Gray. Ernest Gray. Lester Hayes is the only man with a shot. Now Haynes turns him back inside. Lester Hayes got out in front. And James Davis cut down Gray. 62 yards for Ernest Gray. There's a guy that's having a big year for the Giants, Ernest Gray. Bruner out of the shotgun. You know, that height really helps Scott Bruner because he can stand up there. He can see. He can find Gray in there. It looks like Lane here. He should have just used his speed, stayed out there, keep going. Got a block there. Third down. Giants need two backs in this time. And Bruner comes back. Looking at Gray. Intercepted by Mike Haynes. That's the first turnover of the game. Good play by Haynes. They went through a lot to get him. Well, it was a bad read here because this is double coverage. Watch Gray out here. See, Haynes is inside out. Watch him. He has the outside. He has help inside. See, it's a double-double. See, he has inside out. So when Gray starts to the inside, Haynes doesn't go with him. He just stays on that outside and goes right back there. Pressure on the quarterback by Jeff Barnes and the interception by Haynes. As I said, they went through a lot to get him. His team leads 20 to 5. Pontiac. Like a burst from the sun, 2,000 Sunbird has arrived. Pontiac. Calvin Muhammad. The ball just went right through his hands. It was a good throw by Plunkett. He was wide open. Muhammad was underneath. Watch this against the zone. Watch him. He's going to start off here. He comes in motion, and now the ball will be snapped. He just continues on underneath. You see, they drive the defense deep. He has Jackson beaten here <laughs> right in his hands. So Ray Guy will make another appearance. Fading his eyes against the sun. A minute 50 left to play in the third quarter. There's the score of the Raiders 20. The Giants 5. Pete Shaw back deep for the Giants. Ray Guy might run it. Tried to hang the knuckler. Ball hit right on the goal line and he almost did a whale of a job. As it turned out, it's a 14-yard net. The Raiders 20, the Giants 5 in the closing seconds of quarter number three. Second down. Barnwell in motion. The handoff is to Martin Allen. Steps out of the tackle. Steps out of two. And now look at this. Raiders touchdown. What an effort by Marcus Allen on a play that should have been thrown for a loss. Great players make things happen, and I think that's an example. Some players make them happen, some watch them happen, and some don't know what's happening. He makes them happen. He made that one happen. Far hits. And it's 27 to 5. That's 
watch it here. Now, Marcus Allen is going to start off here to the left. Watch. He gets penetration there. He gets knocked off here. Spun around there. Spun around there. Turns back and says, geez, I see something out here. Todd Christensen, make a block for me right there. That's all I need. Okay, I'll get the touchdown. And the Raiders lead 27-5. Here is Jan Stenerud with a milestone. He has now moved to within two of the great George Blanda, his 333rd career field goal. The Packers are still beating Atlanta 34 to 24. Let's go back to Pat. Sometimes those kickers are tough to keep up with. Here's Bruner back to throw and going deep, has a man. Touchdown, Byron Williams. the ball right there from 43 yards away behind Lester Hayes. You know, Bill Parcells was saying yesterday, he said somewhere, he said, we want to take a shot on Lester Hayes because he gets a little sloppy there. Now watch him. Lester's up there tight man to man. Williams gets by right there. He hasn't beaten all the way. Now this is a heck of a throw here. Right. Watch right out in front over his head where there's no way that the corner can get to it. The only guy that can catch that is Williams. Heck of a throw, and Williams showed you why he's out there, and why he's playing with that great speed. Texas Arlington, Ali Haji Sheik. Hits in at 27 to 12. Butch Wolfolk has had a problem in recent weeks with cramps. That may be what that is. Watch this again. The giant lion has been doing a pretty good job of pass protection there. It was against an all-out blitz, and that's why it was man-to-man -man out here in the corner. Wolfolk didn't hit anybody. It must be clear. Fire. Keep blazing. Water. Keep turning. In all of nature, there's nothing like the thrill of an S10 blazer. Chevy Top is taking charge. Brunner chased again, and down he goes again. Lost the ball, but not a fumble. That's the sixth sack. Brunner took a pretty good hit. Now he's holding his ankle, and he's limping. I think he got kicked right on the ankle. Calling for help is another giant down on the other side of the field. Watch it. We'll see the pressure coming from Bruner's right. And he gets leg quit. You see Townsend goes down right there. Now watch his left leg. I think that's where Bruner got kicked, right there. You see that? He got kicked right on the ankle. Raiders lead at 27 to 12. Clock running with 3 minutes, 25 seconds left to play. Melody again swings in motion. Bruner backpedal. Pass is picked off by Van McElroy. Gets it for the Raiders in giant territory at their 48. Second interception of the day by the Raiders. Well, he'd been taking that big rush, and they've been on there all the time, you know, pushing, pushing, pushing them all day. And then he just throws this one. He had to move a little. You see, it gets up in the air on him. It's high, but it was single coverage anyway. McElroy was a free safety just sitting back in the middle. just about take care of things at the Los Angeles Coliseum. A 10-yard return. That's the third interception of the day, and Bruner limps to the sideline. He has taken a real battering this afternoon. I'll tell you, the Raiders, you know, once you know it's passed, you can still get a push with a three-man pass rush. Now, Stalls gets that one over the center. I'll tell you, he's a pretty good pass rusher over that center. Executive producer of the NFL on CBS, Harry O'Neill. Charles Milton III, the senior producer. Today's game produced by Michael Burks, directed by Sandy Grossman. The Raiders ready to go as you look at the rest of our people responsible. Clock running now with just 20 seconds left to play, and the Raiders can list this one under W and improve their record to 10 and 3 and it looks like playoff time for them. 
Coming up, the conclusion of that exciting contest between Green Bay and Atlanta. So let's take you there now for the exciting finish of that game. Here is Frank Gleber.